What's up, Get Better Basketball community? I'm Coach DeMarco, and this is Focused. And in today's episode, I'm going to talk to you about a play the Celtics use three out of four possessions in the fourth quarter against the Orlando Magic that's called Ram Double Drag. It's a play that has a lot of different options, and I'm going to show you three different options off of this action that the Celtics use. Really, really simple set. It could start out of a four low look. So you could have this player down here and have them come across. The Celtics tend to put this player up here and stack these two. Whatever works best for your team. Really, really simple. This player is going to come down and they're going to set a screen for this ball screener. So this is going to be the ram action. This is called a ram screen. You set a screen for the screener who's going to come up and they're going to set a ball screen. But now in this case, we're going to have the second player come up and they're going to set a screen. And this is a double drag ball screen. It's used a lot in trans transition. Some teams call it a 77 screen. Whatever you want to call it, it's two players that are going to set ball screens consecutively. Now in this particular instance, it's going to be Jalen Brown, on all three possessions, it's going to have the basketball. He's going to set up his man on the first play, and he's going to look to score. This player, who's going to be the first screener, is going to be Hauser, who's going to come off of it. And the second screener is going to roll to the basket, and they're going to look for a play in the paint. Let's take a look at it. So here is the first action by the Celtics. You're going to see Pritchard spaced out to this corner. You're going to have Horford spaced out to this corner. Kata is going to set the ball screen for Hauser, who's going to come up. He's going to be the first screener. Kata is going to come up and set the second screen. And we're going to see this other defender stay low and drop coverage and not come up and challenge it. Brown's going to read that screen. He's going to make the right decision, and he's going to pull up for a three-pointer, and he's going to knock down this shot. Let's take a look at this one more time at full speed. We're going to get Kata coming across, setting the screen for Hauser. We're going to get our double drag action and Brown with the open three-pointer. Now, the second time the Celtics are going to run this action, they're going to actually come down. They're going to set this ram screen for Hauser, who's going to come up to set the first ball screen. And then we're going to get the second ball screen by Kata. But Brown's going to read here that the defense is really starting to shade to this side. They're anticipating the action. He's going to take a dribble. He's going to work back to his left, and he's going to finish at the rim. What I like about this is you have three players on this side. You're occupying help defenders that are going to have to come up and defend this double drag ball screen. You have a defender in this corner who's potentially going to be some type of tag defender. Brown's going to make a quick move to the rim. He's going to finish with the left hand. So the first time we saw him use the screen, second time he's going to reject it, and he's going to attack the paint, and he's going to get another two points. Brown had a great fourth quarter in this game, and this action really kick-started it for him. Let's take a look at the second option. So here is Brown, second possession. Again, we're going to see this Ram screen for the ball screen of Hauser. Brown's going to read that, though. He's going to take a hard dribble to the right. Defender's going to anticipate that that's where the action's going. He's going this way. Really good decision. He's going to reject that ball screen. He's going to get into the paint. He's going to finish. Now, he finishes at the rim. He has Horford in the corner. Pritchard, his defender, stays with him. I think he could have had a pass back to Hauser, or he could have possibly hit Kata on the layoff as the Magic really come to Brown in this particular instance. But Brown ends up scoring with the left hand. Again, a lot of options. Defenders come down. You got a kick. You have a kick. Or you have a dump off. He scores in the paint. He's a great player. He's able to score in this situation. But I think he easily could have laid this off to Kata here or lobbed it up at the rim. And they would have got just an easy two points. Let's take a look at this one more time at full speed. Brown's going to reject the ball screen. He's going to cross over. He's going to finish in the paint with the left hand. So here we are with the Celtics Ram double drag action. And we're going to get the same look. Kate is going to come down and he's going to set the screen for Hauser, who's going to come up and set the first ball screen, followed by Kata, 
who's going to set that second screen. But the Magic are going to look at this action, and they're going to say, here's Hauser, and here's Kata setting the screen. We have allowed you to dictate what happens. Brown has come off the screens and, and shot it. He has rejected the screen and attacked the paint. You know what? This time, when you go this way, we're going to blitz you, and we're going to attack you, and we're going to force you to make a difficult decision. So we're going to have Brown with the basketball. He's going to have two defenders on him. We're still going to have Kata here waiting to set the ball screen. But Hauser is going to make an excellent read off of this. He's just going to, and he had been sort of slipping off of the screen to the three-point line. So he's going to do that, and he's going to settle in right here. Brown's going to read that. Brown's going to take a couple of retreat dribbles, does a really nice job getting some space from this blitz, and he's going to dump the ball into Hauser, who's going to attack the paint and do a really nice job with a bang shot off the glass. Now, these are options off of this, but really it's decision-making that the Celtics are allowing to happen. They're reading what the defense is giving them, and they're taking it. The first time, they took the three-pointer because it was available. The second time, they rejected and drove. The third time, they had the slip to the three-point line and then the drive to the basket. And obviously, as these things happen, if these defenders get into the paint, they have kick-out opportunities to both wings. They don't take that in this situation, but these are options that you could have with your team. They're going to start with... Um, Pritchard in this wing and Horford in this wing, they end up flipping them as the possessions go along. It doesn't matter what, what players you have here. The, the important thing is their players can knock down the three and their players who are spacing the floor really well in this situation. They're not coming up the floor and getting into the driving lanes and taking away opportunities or space for the Celtics. Let's take a look at this third option. So here is the third option. Again, we're going to get that Ram screen down here with Kata and Hauser coming off it. Hauser's going to come up, but look, they're going to aggressively blitz the basketball. And they're going to really take the ball out of Brown's hands. Brown had a great fourth quarter. He really led the Celtics to victory in this game. Credit to the Magic. They're trying to make an adjustment. And they say, you know what? He's scoring the basketball. He's hit a three. He's hit that layup. He's got five points in the last three possessions. Let's take the basketball out of his hands. Brown does a nice job. He's going to retreat dribble here. Hauser's going to slip off that screen. He's going to make himself available. Could be a three-point shot. He's going to catch it. He's going to turn. He's going to attack the paint. Now, he makes a ball fake out there. These players do a nice job. He's going to stunt at the basketball, which is typically what teams are going to do and recover. Hauser recognizes that. He could have a layoff to Pritchard or Cater potentially, but he's going to slow play this and do a really nice job allowing this defender to leave his feet and then bank it off the glass. Let's take a look at this again one more time at full speed. This is why the Celtics are so difficult to defend. They're making the right decisions consistently on possessions, and you're going to see it here with Brown and Hauser. The Celtics' ram double drag is a great action that can be used at all levels. I love it because it's really, really simple, and it puts players in a position where they have to make decisions. In one situation, we saw Brown come over, take the three-pointer. Another situation, he rejected and attacked the paint. And the last one, he retreated his dribble and hit Hauser in this area who attacked the paint, slow played it, and scored. The Celtics are making the right decisions, and that's why they're so difficult to play against this season. If you like this video and want to see more videos like it, make sure you hit that like button down below, turn on your notifications, and subscribe to Get Better Basketball on YouTube for more great video breakdowns each and every week. As always, get better every day.